Jaskie here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a long line. Um, I'm going to be showing you how I usually work a long line, um, how I take in the slack, how I let it slide out, um, how I hold it. Um, now today I'm just going to be tying this guy up to my fridge <laughs> just to show you an example of that uh, because it's easiest to do it indoors than you know, practice it indoors. You can do it just like this, tie it to a handle, to you know, a chair, to your couch, whatever. Just tie it to some kind of substance and, and learn how to work with it using uh, feel and timing and touch and sliding your hands through. This is developing feel for allowing it to slide through your hands. You know how to work your hands. Um, you know, this is uh, nice and gentle. Um, so you're gonna see how I work my hands, how I'm you know, sliding them and working them. Um, and how I'm nice and gentle and, and I have quiet, soft hands. I'm not, you know, yanking the leash, going crazy, and I'm not, you know, you see how much this is moving here? Um, so if I have really loud hands, and loud means active. If I were doing this a lot, this is, you know, just on the fridge handle, but if this were on a dog, you're teaching your dog to ignore all of this. All of this leash here, if you're, you get it caught on something and you keep doing this, instead of just going down and getting the leash and fixing it, if you're lazy or you're, you know, you just don't think about it and you keep trying to fix it and get it around something, you're teaching your dog to ignore that, which could normally be a signal. Um, so for Adonis, if I were walking and it happened to get snagged on something, for him, he would stop here because he says, oh, I'm stuck on something. Let me just sit here um, and loosen this leash. Otherwise, uh, a, a dog who's not used to pressure and release get their leash caught up and they start fighting and they go crazy. Or if the person has it caught on something, say it's caught over here, and you're doing this, and you're, you're wiggling it over here, this is really loud, versus just coming over, getting it unsnagged, and letting it go. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I usually handle the leash. Hope y'all can see me okay. So here we have a 20 foot leash. Um, this is a long line, it's made of cotton, um, nice and soft. Um, you know, I, I like the, uh, you know, I think this is a half inch, you know, maybe between half inch and one inch. Um, works okay. I like the cotton type versus the nylon. Nylon is a little bit slicker, a little bit uh, slipperier, a little bit thinner. Uh, it kind of cuts through your hand more versus the cotton, which is a little bit softer and a little thicker. Um, and it's a little bit easier on the hand. So that's just my opinion. So say I were to try to take in all this slack. Um, now I'm going to slide my hand down. Um, I'm going to, you know, usually I like to circle it. You can circle it any way you'd like. Um, as you see, I'm sliding my hands down and just circling it and grabbing it and holding the rest of it in this other hand. You may notice I automatically do this. I kind of loop this around my wrist. So I take this, make a little slip hold through there, and it kind of you know slides over my wrist. So this is just kind of a backup in case I happen to drop this. This is normally what I do uh, if I had a dog that pulled really hard. Um, maybe I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this with a dog that pulls really hard because you don't want your wrist to be, your wrist to be dislocated, your arm to be dislocated. So make sure your dog knows how to give him pressure into pressure before you try doing this. Um, this is just a backup. Uh, you could also just take this and put the loop over your thumb as a thumb lock and then grab the rest of this, you know, grab the whole leash right here. Um, but for, you know, just for my normal demonstration, I usually just kind of slide it over my wrist as a backup and then there you go. Um, so I take this, I slide it in. If I wanted to let this leash out, you know, so I'm gonna say take it all the way up here, I can just let it slide out. Um, I can let it go, say he's pulling it more and more. I kind of let it slide out of my hand and it kind of falls. And as I get closer to him, then I'm gonna bring in that slack. So I still leave a little bit of slack, but I'm not, you know, stepping over all over this leash and there's no more, you know, uh, tangle or stepping or, you know, twisting, um, you know, so that's why I like to take in the slack. So say he's getting further away from me. So say this is going this way. As I come up to him, I'm going to be shortening up this leash. Say he just kind of stopped here and he's sniffing. Then I'll take it in and maybe leave about this much, maybe four to six feet. I just loose leash. Then I'm holding it again in my left hand and I'm just kind of holding it in my right hand. Um, it's just kind of laying across my right hand. You know, I'm right handed so I kind of control it this way. Um, so say I'm, uh, you know, letting him have all of his leash and I want to take it back. I slide it down with my right hand, I grip it, bring it to my left hand, I let go. Then I slide it back down again, grip it, bring it to my left hand, let go, and grip it with my left hand. So you see, I'm just kind of, I mean, it may be re really simple, it's just like bringing it in a hose. Um, but the more you work with it, the more you see, you know, if I'm going to grab my leash, I don't just yank it and pull my hand back. I'm not going to be pulling my hands all the way back here because then you lose leverage and it's just you're being really loud. So, you know, you want to slide down, grip it, and bring it back if you want to shorten. You can also let it slide out. Um, if you want to slide it out of your left hand, you can let that happen too. Um, you know, practice with both hands. Just kind of practice with your, with your 
being a leash about grabbing and letting it slide out of your hand and then reaching down again, gripping, bringing it back, sliding it back out again. This is developing feel, developing quiet hands, developing timing. So you can have a good little rhythm going where you're sliding it out, bringing it back. I've done this a lot for many years with Adonis, so I'm pretty good at, I know how to handle a long line um, because I have a lot of practice with this. If you're not used to it, you're gonna have some trouble. So for a lot of people, they're you know, used to doing this and you know, they're trying to do this or, or they bundle it up and they just kind of do this. You know, you can do that too. Um, if you have a, you know, I don't like to keep knots on my leash. I always, always, always like to keep, you know, make sure that there's no knots on my leash. You know, a lot of people get a little bored and they, they put and twist and this and that. And then, you know, the leash is, is knotted and it's not as long and you don't get as, you know, as smooth if you're trying to bring it through your hands, you hit a knot or it gets caught on something. It's heavy. Um, so if the dog is used to being light um, and there's a big heavy knot, then say there's and we're just going to bundle this up and, and act like um, you know this is, is your, your leash caught in a knot. So then you're hanging on to this. And so this is, is more weight, to, you know, teaching your dog to ignore more of this weight and pull more because they have to pull more to carry this weight. Instead of just simply undoing the knot, that was a slip knot, but say you go back and you untie the knot, and then your dog has that much more freedom. Um, you know, so when you're with dogs, don't, don't just be lazy. Don't just, you know, say, oh, I don't want to do it, you know, it's, you know, there's no point, they still have their leash. You can do that that way too, but I feel like um, you know, it's better if you just take a little bit more time, make sure your leash is well taken care of. It's not gonna get knots, it's not gonna get all you know, nasty and wet in there and you know, molded or whatever, you know. Um, learn to control the leash, take it in. You know, so a lot of people just kind of let their leash go all the time like this and the dog's going back and forth. And they're constantly moving out of the leash and around and that's fine too. Um, I just like to control the leash a little bit better. I'm not overbearing. I'm not constantly, if I'm going to have all this leash, I'm not going to keep my dog right here. You know, some people also do that, which is give your dog some, some room. You know, let, surprisingly, if you have a really reactive dog, surprisingly, if you have a really reactive dog, if you keep them on a short leash, you're actually causing them to be more reactive. I know you're trying to control them more. But think about if it were you. If you're already anxious and reactive and you're trying to defend yourself or you're trying to, you're in fight or flight, you're trying to get away from something. So if I'm in a packed, crowded store, I have a lot of social anxiety. That would make me panic. If I wanna leave, but I can't, someone's forcing me to be there, or better yet, they're, they're yelling at me or they're talking to me or they're touching me, constantly pushing me through this crowd, it's gonna make me wanna fight them even more. Versus giving them that room to think for themselves I might just need to get out of the crowd. It doesn't mean I need to leave the store. I might just say, hey, I just need a little bit of room. Let me breathe, let me think, and then I'm okay. And I can work it out on my own. And you see all this loose leash. A lot of times when I work with reactive dogs, if I do from that to just that, they will actually stand there on a loose leash and they will be a lot less reactive. Um, they are able to think for themselves. So. That's just kind of a benefit. Um, you know, if you have a reactive dog, don't just go straight out to public and give your dog a 20 foot leash. Do it in a, a, a private area or an area where there's a, not a lot of other people and then try it and make sure that you always have backups. You know, and it, with a long leash like this, uh, I always wanna make sure I have my dog's regular collar with tags on, I use this on a harness. I don't use long lines on a regular collar just because of risk. If they do run out, there's a lot of leverage here there's a lot of length here. So say they go running, 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 and it tightens up. If that's on their collar or their neck, they can easily hurt themselves. Um, along with that, you still need to make sure that if they're, say they're running, 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 you know, you need to be able to let this slide out through your hands and maybe you use your hand as a grip so you can slow it down. You know, my hand is going through here, I'm grabbing it, and I say, hey, hold on, buddy. You know, and so I can grab it and slow it down before they get to that yank. You know, versus if they're just running and they do it on their own, they yank. You know, my hand is kind of like that, that extra break there to kind of hold them. So they have less of a yank all the way over here and more of a, you know, a slow stop from here. Um, again, you always want to work with your dog to make sure that they don't just go run and clothesline themselves and they're going crazy. If you're going down a crowded area, you're in a store, I don't recommend using something really long like this. You know, use it in a field. If you're going out to sniff, you're doing scent training, uh, service dog training, whatever. You know, they, these are really good for recall. If you have your dog on a recall, before you let them go and let them go dragging a leash around uh, to practice the recall, start on a long line. Um, and then that will teach you really good 
uh, skills on when they're coming back to you, you just reel it up as they're coming back to you. Um, so that's really good for training you, training them. Um, if you end up working with other animals, such as horses or cattle, you know how to use the rope. Um, anything, you know, anything you can use. This is just going to be very helpful for teaching you how to handle a long uh, piece of rope or twine or, you know, whatever it is that you're working with. Um, so it's going to teach you to use, you know, some different motor skills. Um, I like to loop it like this. Develop feel with your leash. Be nice and quiet. Don't be, you know, yanking your leash over here. Don't be stepping on it while your dog's walking so then it goes all tight like this. If you need to stop your dog, you know, maybe go back and grab it, let it slide through your hands and then slowly slow it down. Unless it's an emergency, then yeah, step on your leash, but if you can, help it. You want your dog to, again, learn to be nice and soft on leash. Practice just like this. Tie it to your fridge, tie it to a chair, tie it to a couch, to another person, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. If you can have someone help, they're just being the anchor. Um, and it just teaches you to slide it through your hands and be nice and quiet, you know, just like this. Um, and if your, uh, you know, dog is, is, you know, say, a distance away from you, I recommend pulling in that slack while you're walking up to them. So that way there's less likely, you know, there's less of a chance they're going to trip someone, um, tangle someone, they're going to, you know, jump on someone. Um, and then from here you can even work on uh, longer, uh, you know, cords of, of leash or, shorter lengths of leash. Um, you know, it just depends on what situation you're getting into. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it makes sense. Um, thanks so much for dropping by. I do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see next time. And until then, stay positive.